you record. Yeah. Okay, hello everyone, welcome. We're just letting a few more people um, come in. They're just in the waiting room as you sat in there too. So we're just going to let a few more people in and then we'll start the presentation in a minute here or so. All right, again, welcome everyone to the 2021 virtual celebration. Um, today we have uh, hike planning. Um, I just wanted to go over a few things again on Zoom and just make sure that everybody's familiar. Everybody has come in and they're muted, uh, which is when you go to the bottom of your screen, there is a microphone. There's a red line through it right now, which means you're muted. If the red line is gone, it means that your mic is live. Um, so uh, Matt Davis has said that you can definitely use your mic. He would love interaction, um, but just be please be aware of that because um, it does pick up background. Um, and then right next to it is the video. Um, it's a stop and start video. So if you have a red line through that means your video is not on. Um, as mine is not have a red line on as you can all see me. And then if you go to the middle of that bar, you're going to see a chat bubble and you feel free to put questions in there um, if you prefer to use that. Um, otherwise, again, uh, Matt has said, please feel free to ask questions throughout um, the there we go. Some more people are coming in um, throughout the presentation. So that being said, um, I'll hand this over to Matt, but again, welcome to the 2021 virtual celebration hike planning. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'll see if I can get my screen share to work. Can everybody see uh, planning your next successful hike on the NCT? Yes. All right. So uh, that quote pretty much sums up uh, the importance of hike planning. Hiking begins before you reach the trailhead. I hadn't seen that until I started doing research, you know, for this presentation, and I thought it was, uh, you know, really a great summary. So again, thanks for joining. Here's where we are going to go. We're at the trailhead, and these are some of the places that we're going to visit. We're going to talk about why hike plan, uh, things to think about when choosing a hike, things to think about when planning a hike. Uh, we'll have a hopefully an interesting discussion about traditional versus modern hike planning. Uh, it seems to have changed over the last, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years or so. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about barriers to entry for new hikers and the role that we all can play in and encouraging more people to get out and use the North Country Trail or other hiking trails. Uh, we'll talk about available hike planning resources. And then at the end, uh, I want you guys to all have the opportunity to share things that uh, you do when you plan hikes on the North Country Trail or really any other trail. So does anybody have any questions? All right, we'll get rolling. Um, but before I get started, I was, I was thinking uh, last night, how do we make this a little bit more interactive right from the get-go? Uh, so let's, let's see if we can do a roll call by state. I think we can pull that off, Abby. All right, so uh, raise your hand if you are from Vermont. Do you have anybody raising their hand? I can't see. How about New York? All right, we got Stephanie. Pennsylvania. Ohio. Michigan. Wisconsin. Minnesota, 
and North Dakota. I think I saw Glee. Yay, North Dakota. <laughs> All right. That's kind of a long tradition that uh, we used to do at Celebration. So I was thinking last night, we should try and see if we can do that. All right, so thanks for participating. Um, so the importance of hike planning, you know, like I said, that first quote that I shared, uh, you know, really did a good job of summarizing. Uh, but to me, the, the best indication or the best uh, justification for hike planning is the leave no trace principles. The first one is plan ahead and prepare. And it's the first one on purpose, because if you don't do that one, you have a great chance of something going squirrely on your hike. Whereas if you do a good job, you still might have something squirrely that can happen, but you'll be in a better position to be able to deal with that. Uh, and, and another reason is planning your hike will help you minimize the impacts to the trail, the lands it passes through and other trail users. And we'll have some examples from uh, Leave No Trace that we'll talk about in a little bit. And another good quote at the end, AHS really likes uh, quotes about the importance of hike planning. So hiking is a lot like painting a house and that the preparation is just as important as the actual activity itself. Does everybody agree with that? Yep. All right. So here's a couple examples. Again, these are from uh, Leave No Traces website. And um, maybe I'll just let you guys read those individually. So take a couple minutes and read through them. So those are probably all examples of things that some of us may have experienced or heard others experience. You know, these, these kinds of scenarios happen all the time on trails like ours. So the, what's, what's the big deal? You know, why is this important? And some of you may remember that si uh, song, sign, signs everywhere, signs. Um, we have a lot, of, a lot of signs on the North Country Trail telling people what they can and can't do. Uh, so what's, what does that matter? Well, if people don't follow the rules and sometimes they don't follow rules because they didn't plan and didn't do research and didn't know what the rules were, that can have implications for the trail. And um, we probably all have examples or heard examples of people doing things that they weren't supposed to do on the North Country Trail and then having repercussions. Uh, the best one that I can share is the Spear Hiking Trail Association had some hikers, um, I guess you could say harassing a private landowner uh, or guests of a private landowner. This was maybe seven years ago or so, to the point where that landowner no longer wanted to host the, that section of the Spear Hiking Trail. And here we are, you know, five, seven years later, the Spear Hiking Trail is still dealing with a roadwalk to go around that section of uh, trail on private land that they lost. And they're having to go to great ex expense to build that new section of trail. And the trail experience has um, diminished. And that's all because hikers didn't necessarily know whose land they were on. They assumed they were on public land and felt it upon themselves to kind of get into some arguments with the landowner. So, so knowing whose land you're on is a great example, as well as following all these other rules, you know, knowing where you can and can't go, what you can and can't do on the trail, um, you know, when you're on private property, all those kinds of things. And really, you know, that can make the difference between our trail ending and our volunteers having the ability to build new trail to open new lands to outdoor recreation. So uh, things to think about when choosing a hike. Um, and this is something that I do, you know, when my family, we, we plan hikes, uh, you know, what do we want to do? What's our goal? What's our expectation? Um, you know, is there something that we really want to see? Who will we be hiking with? Is it all adults? Is it adults and kids? Are they all newbies? Or is it folks that have, you know, been hiking their whole life? How good a shape are we in? You know, and that can change. Um, you know, we're, probably not in the best of shape as a family after our long Minnesota winters. So we'll start out in the spring with some easier, shorter hikes, and then hopefully work our way back into better hiking shape as the summer goes. And, and by, by the time the fall comes around, which is the best hiking season in my book, you know, we're in pretty good shape and we can go for a longer hike. How long do you want to be out? How far do you want to go? Uh, how far from the trailhead do you want to go? 
uh, what do you want to see? You know, oftentimes people will ask me, what should I, where should I go hiking on the North Country Trail? And I always say, well, what do you want to see? Do you want to have great views? Do you want to see a waterfall? Do you want to see old growth trees? Uh, do you want to get out on the prairie? Uh, is there any particular wildlife that you'd really like a chance to see? Uh, do you want to go someplace new or are you going to go back to your favorite um, hiking trail that you hike over and over and over again because it's it's great. And then that last one is uh, particularly important nowadays because uh, particularly this summer we've got a whole bunch of things going on. You know here in Minnesota we have air quality alerts. We've been breathing wildfire smoke from Canada all summer. Uh, there's threat of severe storms. Uh, we've had trail closures. The Kekakopic Trail up in the Boundary Waters was closed for three weeks, I believe it was. Uh, advisories, the Superior National Forest, again here in Minnesota, just issued a requirement for all recreationists to hang their food or to use uh, bear-proof food can containers. And then also we've you know, had fire bans because of the drought. And we try to capture all of those important bits of information um, and, and capture them on our trail alerts page, which is on our website. Is everybody familiar with the trail alerts page? All right, uh, so some, some more things, even more things to think about emergency planning. Do you have an itinerary? It's probably a good idea, you know, particularly the longer and farther from a trailhead you go to write out, here's where we're gonna go, here's when we expect to be back, and then to share that with somebody who's not going with you on the hike so that if something goes wrong and you don't come out when you think you should be, they know where to look for you and they know when to start looking for you. So very important tip there. You know, and obviously that, like I said, it's more important the farther in you go, you know, if you're going to your local park and it's gonna be a one mile loop and you're never gonna be far from a road and there's lots of people, then it's maybe not as important, but it's still not a bad idea to do that. Maps, uh, subject near and dear to my heart. Uh, I always like to look at maps all the time, but if I'm gonna go out on a hike, I will study the maps ahead of time so that you have a pretty good idea of the landscape that you'll be hiking through. You know, and, and to do that before you get out there, because uh, you don't want to get out there and, and realize that, you know, you have the wrong map or the map's not the most current up to date version. Um, have you identified bail points? You know, are there spots where, okay, if we get to this spot, you know, we need to decide, can we make it all the way to the end of the hike or should we turn around? You know, those kinds of things, you know, where are the water sources? Are there potentially confusing spots like trail intersections? Sometimes there's confusing trail intersections after another, you know, one after another. So uh, knowing that, you know, you need to think about those things can, can definitely help you when you're out there. Your hike pace, you know, particularly for a group, can everyone in the group cover the distance in the time available? The worst thing is to have, uh, you know, folks at the tail end of the hike that are going slow and the people at the front aren't happy because they spend half the hike waiting and the people at the end are, are feeling frustrated because everybody's waiting for them. Uh, so, you know, in that case, you know, it might make sense to split the group into two or, you know, pick a different hike that everybody do a better job staying at the same pace. Are you open to other uses besides foot traffic? You know, we all know that there's sections of the North Country Trail that aren't just a hiking trail. There's sections that may be open to horses, mountain bikes, you know, other things. Um, you know, do you want to share the trail with others? You know, that might be an important consideration, particularly if, you know, you're going out with kids. You know, I don't know if I would want to go on a hike uh, on a trail that had horses, unless it was in North Dakota, where you can easily just step off the trail and, and let the horses by. What will you take with you? You know, obviously having the right clothing and gear is important. We all know that because we live in the North country, but uh, you know, it's even important in the summer. You know, if you have a thunderstorm and you get soaking wet and you're wearing, you know, clothes that won't keep you warm, you know, you might want to have something in your backpack that uh, will do a better job of keeping you warm than what you're wearing. So we're going to talk a little bit about traditional hike planning and then contrast it with what I would call more modern methods. And you can see there at the bottom, there's a whole bunch of resources that can help you plan a hike on various components of the North Country Trail. We don't have one guidebook that you can pull off the shelf that can help you plan a hike on the whole North Country Trail. Um, and, and the reason that is the case is because our trail is so long that by the time the ink was dry on that book, it'd be 
way out of date because their trail is constantly changing. And it would also be super, super thick. I don't think anybody would want to carry a book, a guidebook around covering 4,700 miles. So what I would consider traditional hiking or hike planning resources would include hiking clubs, you know, North Country Trail Association chapters, our affiliate partners, meetup groups, uh, certainly trail guidebooks like we were just talking about. Um, you know, we've got one here in Minnesota that the six chapters of the NCTA work together on, covers the whole state. Uh, general hiking guidebooks like Hiking Ohio or the 50 best hikes in where, wherever the location is. Um, agency websites, uh, local tourism promotion websites, local outfitters, and hiking guide businesses. Um, that's kind of a newer one, but there's people that are realizing there's a demand out there within the public for helping people get out and enjoy the outdoors. And I would just offer a couple cautions, um, you know, particularly on the North Country Trail, I would say, you know, the, the more you go down that list, you're kind of maybe sacrificing some quality or, you know, the reliability of the information may be getting less as you go down that scale. You know, I would say our chapters, our volunteers are the definitive source of information on their trail. They know it the best. And guidebooks, you know, are only as good as the people who wrote them. Um, and agency websites, at least in my neck of the woods, you know, we're lucky if they have updated the fact that the North Country Trail now goes through eight states. You know, still I see often places that it's 3,200 miles across, you know, seven states. And it's like, nope, we're, we're a little bit past that. So maps, uh, like I said, I love looking at maps. I know probably some of you are in that same boat and uh, the, the North Country Trail Association, we offer a lot of great map resources um, and we offer them for free for the most part. Uh, and that includes our online map, which I'm sure most of you have uh, checked out and we'll have a little uh, example towards the end. Uh, we also offer online map downloads and you can download those in two formats, uh, the paper version that you can download and print off on your home computer, uh, your, your home printer, or you can take to a local print shop. They're formatted for eight and a half by 11. Uh, or you can download them directly to your smartphone for use with the Avenza Maps app. Uh, but one caution, um, people always remind me of this because I do like to use uh, excerpts from those maps that you know, that information can get a little dated because Matt Robotham does update the trail and our mileage markers do change. So you need to be cautious if you're using those maps and the map markers with others that uh, if you refer to map or mile marker 32, you know, somebody else's mile marker 32 might be different. So all you really need to do is just make sure that you're looking at the same version. Uh, North Country Trail Association chapter websites, you know, a lot of our chapters have suggested hikes on their website. A lot of them have printed brochures that they have available at local chamber of commerces and trailheads and all that good stuff. A lot of those will have suggested hikes. Uh, some other ones, um, Trails Illustrated maps, I, I love looking at those. Um, to me, they're some of the best maps that are available out there. Uh, Land manager maps, the Forest Service has maps for all of the national forests that our trail goes through along with the Cheyenne National Grassland. Uh, national Park Service units, units have their own maps. And then a lot of our state part, agency partners will have their own maps as well. And it's been interesting to see a lot of those agency partners have adopted the use of Avenza maps as well. So they're now making available their state park maps or state forest maps as geo PDFs. So that uh, just like our maps, you can take them with you with your phone. Uh, what else? What am I missing? Feel free to uh, just unmute yourself and throw out some some resources, traditional resources that you guys find valuable on the North Country Trail. Um, well, my hiking buddy and I always take two cars and we'll put one at each end of a, of a section of trail. And so it's really important for us to use county map books and our Google Maps and any other resource we can get to look up the roads because getting to a trailhead is just as difficult and, and takes just as much planning uh, as walking the trail itself. Yep, great point. Thanks, Glenn. Any others? Yeah. 
Yeah, Matt, and at least in North Dakota, since we since uh, we've gone the uh, nine one one route, where a county road might it might say County Road thirteen, but now when you get out there, it's one hundred and fifty eighth Avenue Southeast. And so again, uh, what he just said before that is taking a look at those maps closely to know, you know, that you might find a uh, in North Dakota at least the section line might now be a a street, <laughs> and uh, so I, I just think planning ahead, like you, like you're talking about, knowing those kinds of things. And he's right; it does take longer to get to a trailhead sometimes than it does to actually do the walk pike. Yep, good point. Thanks, Glee. Hey, Matt. This is Brad. I have one thing to add. Yep. Uh, um, if you're doing you know, like point to point trailhead hikes, especially in the Upper Peninsula. Um, I really advise people to get a hold of the local chapter because there are places that are shown as trailheads, you know, in the, in the information about the trail that bait, like recently we had logging going on and some of the roads turned into mud pits and you would not want to drive down there and you can't find that out unless you talk to, the, you know, the local trail people. So I really recommend people do that. Yeah, I've driven a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a great point. Thanks, Brad. Any others? One of the things, right. Matt, that I wanted to just throw out, and it's not the North Country Trail, but when you talked about water sources, uh, finding out that what is normal filtered water can suddenly change on the Matahe this summer. We had a lot of times when we had E. coli because cattle had been found dead in the river and so even filtering it wasn't safe so not assuming that every just because there's a lake or a river there that it's going to be water that even filtered is safe yeah that's a great point yeah and we'll Matt, talk I a think, little um, oh. <clears throat> one of the other things that well first i'd like to say you know google maps is kind of this unarticulated part of our map strategy so so that was a really good point that glenn brought up we we do kind of our maps are so hyper-focused on the trail that um, at least my assumption is that a lot of folks will use resources like a Delorum or a Google Maps to get to the trailhead. And, and, you know, as we said, some of these roads can be extremely challenging to travel on. Um, but the other, you know, the other thing that, that you didn't bring up that um, is becoming less and less popular, but was really the, the hot item, you know, 10 years ago was, was just using GPS data in like a Garmin device. Um, and that's still a really valid way to work with our um, navigation resources, especially for folks that are out there for a longer stretch of time or out in cold weather. Uh, those Garmin devices can, can take replaceable batteries, uh, especially lithium ion batteries. You know, so that's something you can bring with you. Um, maybe if you're not even gonna rely on it, it's a nice, uh, a nice fail safe. And we do offer all of our half mile points as uh, downloadable GPS, GPX files that you can put on a, on a Garmin. So you can follow the breadcrumb. All right, yeah, thanks, Matt. All right, so uh, lastly, you know, we, we do have some folks that have hiked, you know, either long sections or the entire North Country Trail and have kind of published their journals or, you know, kind of, uh, an account of their hike, you know, those are also valuable resources, not just for, for through hikers, but for folks that uh, want to read about, you know, what did Joan or what did Luke or what did Nimble Wheel Nomad experience on this section? You know, the trail may be a little bit different because um, some of these books are, you know, the experiences are from a while ago, but still valuable information from people that, you know, went out there and, and had a North Country Trail experience. And then, you know, that one on the right isn't really a a uh, hiker memoir, but it's a history of the Superior Hiking Trail. So it's going to have a lot of that behind the scenes information about why is the Superior Hiking Trail located where it is, which is something that I know a lot of hikers think about, you know, why am I climbing up this, this hill? Well, there's probably a really good reason and a book like that will shed some of that light. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what I would consider modern hike planning, which uh, is really crowdsourcing your next hike using social media. And I've had some good discussions with my wife and some others about this. Uh, you know, in, in some ways, this is kind of a philosophical argument. Um, you know, and maybe I'm the, the grumpy old guy, get off my lawn kids. Um, but to me, just posing on social media 
hey, I want to go for a hike, where should I go? You know, isn't really hike planning. It's, it is a form of doing research, but you're just asking somebody else to, you know, tell you exactly where to go. And, and yeah, like I said, you're doing a little bit of research, but you're not doing as much research as you would, you know, through some of those other methods, because you're not necessarily, you know, comparing options, you're just getting somebody else's idea. Uh, but, but I did highlight a couple of things in these two uh, posts, which I grabbed from the Superior Hiking Trail Facebook group from the summer. And you'll notice the one on the left is experienced backpackers that are coming from Georgia. So they already know what they're doing. Uh, they're looking for some hike recommendations. And, you know, they give some information about some of the sideboards. And then the one on the right, you know, they're looking for um, an eight mile hike and they're new to hiking. And so maybe a little bit of a contrast between the two. Um, and, and I, you know, viewed these a little bit different because, you know, the person on the right might not even know that there is a Superior Hiking Trail guidebook or Superior Hiking Trail maps that they can go and do some of this planning. Whereas I would say if you're an experienced backpacker, you probably should expect that, hey, there's probably a guidebook out there. You know, even if I'm from Georgia, I can order it online and um, or maybe you can even order it via interlibrary loan. Um, so yeah, there's, there's opportunities to do some research, old school research. Um, so let's talk a little bit about barriers to participation by new hikers. Um, you know, this is an issue that's near and dear to the North Country Trail Association. Uh, you know, we have a, a JEDI initiative and, and Val, maybe, uh, you know, you could talk a little bit more about that. Uh, you know, certainly a lot more about it than I do. Um, but I would just say that, you know, sometimes it can be tough for new hikers to know where to go in, in the North Country Trail area or really anywhere. Um, you know, if you're just new to hiking, you know, if you typed in, you know, on, on Google, you know, where should I go hiking? You're, you're probably just as likely to find information about the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail or the Continental Divide Trail because, you know, those three trails get so much of the love. Um, you know, that, that might come up with more information than where can I go hiking five miles from my house. So, uh, you know, I think our chapters, our members, our volunteers, you know, we all play a role in this. Um, so what, what can we do to help get new hikers out onto the trail? Who's got some ideas they want to throw out there? Just unmute yourself and throw it out. Well, earlier this spring, um, my grandson and several of his college friends wanted to go hiking on the North Country Trail for a few days. And so they drove up from Southern Michigan to my home where I live not that far from the trail. And I helped them plan how long and where they could go for a day. I was familiar with that section of the trail, they weren't. Uh, and then I dropped them off and made arrangements to pick them up. And on the day that I picked them up, I hiked out to, to meet them too. So um, those kinds of personal interactions, whether they're with grandchildren or whoever can help. Yeah, great point. And I would just say, I think our reputation as a trail community is we're very welcoming and we roll out the red carpet for people that want to get out and experience the trail and our volunteers will bend over backwards to help folks out, you know, even if they're not grandkids, they'll help out complete strangers. So I think that is appreciated by the hiking community. Any other ideas? Well, Matt, we here at the North Country Trail chapter at the Western Terminus, new area, new chapter. We've done a lot of uh, guided hikes where we take people out, you know, we've hit, probably had more than what we'll have in the future. And then we also did some extended kinds of uh, hikes where they could come down and, and just experience the trail for the first time. So just getting the information out that our trail is, is here and how they can access it safely and, and enjoy it. Yeah, and, and you said, Glee, it was the on your own guided hikes where the chapter kind of makes it easy for people to go out on their own. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we partner with some of the agencies where the hike leads through and we just, we, you know, we go out and put signs and we kind of try to do it uh, specific times of year. Like we had a, you know, hike with the eagles when we had the bald eagles flying in the open water down on Lake Sakakawea. 
We had over a hundred people there in the middle of January over a course of a week. Uh, that's pretty unusual for North Dakota in the middle of the winter. And now uh, this fall, we have a hike scheduled in some new trail called uh, Hike with the Salmon. The salmon will be running up through the hatchery, which is part of the trail. And so the hatchery, the National Hatchery is working with us to put a guided hike to show where the salmon come through the trail and the Lake Sakakawea and um, you know, how significant their returning to their place of birth to spawn and die is. And so uh, we've had just a tremendous amount of, uh, of interest uh, doing those kinds of hikes. We started in December and we had one every month. We probably had close to 500 people on the trail. Excellent. Who else has got ideas? What what has other chapters or, or volunteers done? Ideas you um, want to share? I'm part of the Schwamigan chapter in Northern Wisconsin. And we have a group of women that's been hiking for, I don't know, five or however many years, the um, North Country 100 challenge has been going on. And uh, it's grown exponentially. And, and we hike every Monday. I'm kind of the co one of the coordinators of the group. And um, we send out a email of where the, you know, where we're gonna meet or carpool to within the Shawam we usually we stay within the Shawamigan chapter and just usually just do it out and back. And we do an awful lot of our uh, snow hiking by snowshoeing in the winter time. So um, we try to avoid the trail when the ticks are bad. <laughs> so excellent. Thank you, Jackie. Do. What about uh, what about chapters? What what kind of hike planning assistance have you guys offered to folks? Anybody want to throw out some ideas? Uh, this is Connie from the Peter Wolf, and we have a monthly hike year round, and uh, we send it to our members. We post it on our Facebook page, and we post it to anybody who's given us their email address after a hike, and tell them to share it and uh, it, it gets more and more popular. Um, it might get to a point where it's too popular that I'm not sure what we'll do at that point. But uh, people who Matt, have I've... hiked on the trail before are finding out about it. Excellent, thank you, Connie. Matt, that's uh, actually why I kind of sat in on this session is uh, we're a new chapter and we're kind of trying to figure out how to be good trail angels and uh, being the western terminus we have a lot of people interested in coming through here so just kind of trying to see you know how people are managing that and um, trying to be as helpful as they can our membership is quite small and our geography of our chapter membership is quite large so just trying to figure out how best to make that happen and any other chapters want to share what you guys do to, to help out folks that are looking to get out on your section of trail? If you don't, if you don't want to say it out loud, you can put it in the chat too. That's an option. So, um, oh, go ahead. I'm not in any chapter, um, but I felt compelled to say something. Uh, I follow a lot of people on Instagram. I follow a lot of people on YouTube. And um, just recently I took a trip to the Northeast um, and I had the opportunity to see the Eastern terminus of the NCT, which is so um, exciting for me. Um, but whenever I was there, you have the Long Trail and the Appalachian Trail like diverging. And whenever I was there, um, a couple of AT hikers were kind of sitting down and looking at me like, where did you come from? Why are you here? And I'm like, well, I just wanted to see the, you know, Eastern terminus of the NCT. And they're looking at me like, what? What's, what's the NCT? And I'm like, oh God, you know, I'm, <laughs> I felt kind of foolish. But it's like, it, I don't know if there's a way for you to, or the NCT can harness some of those super popular hikers out there in the community. Um, it, like I follow 11 Skies, 
Um, there's another one um, on Instagram. But anyway, I don't really have an idea, but I think I'm trying to help you guys harness like that sort of avenue, something with social media, Instagram, YouTube, and reaching out to those more popular hikers. That way they can get the word out almost for you. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Stephanie, are you on? Stephanie Campbell? Yep, I'm on. Do you want to just give a real quick uh, response to the Eastern Terminus situation since Julie brought it up? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so the Eastern Terminus, uh, you know, as as folks probably know, Vermont was added very recently. Um, and so, you know, because of COVID, we were a bit delayed in kind of getting all the partners together, everyone at the table um, to get some kind of formalized uh, things going. Um, and so, you know, we're kind of starting that this year. Um, just because we were delayed. So the Eastern Terminus is definitely something that's high on our priority list. Um, but, uh, you know, it's something that is a little bit, you know, we want to make sure that all the partners are involved before we make any big decisions about, you know, putting up a huge sign or, you know, really trying to promote that when, you know, we haven't had you know, too many conversations with uh, the Appalachian Trail Conservancy about it. Um, so we're just kind of trying to be good partners and good neighbors uh, and, and be collaborative uh, before we kind of go out and, you know, cause, and, you know, as the regional trail coordinator for New York and Vermont, I have been getting a lot of, you know, questions about, you know, why, why isn't this information more available? Why, you know, why isn't there a big, you know, beautiful sign like there is at the Western Terminus? And, you know, these trails are, you know, are going to be here long after we're gone. So there's no, you know, we don't want to rush something. We want to make sure that like the, the local folks, the regional folks are, are really involved and have a seat at the table. Um, so that's what we're just trying to kind of create a good atmosphere and kind of get those formalized relationships going. Um, so definitely in the future, we will have more, you know, we will have things more formalized and feel more confident in what we can put out and do more promotions. Um, and I definitely hear what you're saying um, about, you know, trying to, to promote it more, but we just don't want to, you know, promote it before it's before it's uh, ready for prime time. Yeah, we want to do it right so that when all those AT hikers get to main junction, they're they're putting their best foot forward for us. All right, uh, any any ideas that chapters or volunteers want to share about uh, encouraging new folks, uh, maybe folks who we don't often see on the North Country Trail right now, but you know, our trail is open to everybody, you know, no matter where you live, no matter what you're uh, you know, race, religion, you know, socioeconomic background, all that good stuff. Any ideas, uh, Val, I don't know if you want to share a little bit about the Jedi initiative and the mini grants. Sure. Um, I'm happy to share a little bit about that. Um, so we have started a mini grant program, um, for folks who are working on justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion projects along the North Country Trail. Um, you know, these grants are, these mini grants are kind of designed for, you know, what we refer to as affinity groups or groups, you know, with, you know, with an identity that supports one of these four, uh, you know, four principles um, along the trail. And we've had a few applicants so far and just awarded our first grant to a youth center in Western Pennsylvania, who's bringing a group of young folks out for a camping trip, um, you know, on the North Country Trail. And, you know, this grant money is gonna support them buying some gear that they didn't have and, you know, get them out camping, you know, many of them for the first time. Um, so pretty cool initiative, ties back to the local chapter. So if you have groups you're working with, you know, uh, locally, um, as I know many chapters do, please encourage them to apply for one of these grants um, because, 
like I said, we've only had, it's only been open for a little while, but we haven't had, you know, an outpouring of applications. So we would love to uh, give folks some resources to get out on the trail. Um, we do have a Jedi committee, you know, uh, that's who kind of oversees the grant program. So, you know, really important part of our work. And I think Matt links right to our page uh, in his presentation, but I'll drop the link in the chat too for folks who are interested in knowing more. Thanks, Val. Does anybody have any other ideas they want to share? Things that their chapter or maybe they've seen other organizations do? Get Help get new folks out? This is Karen and I'm from Minnesota. One thing that I think we might be missing out on is the All Trails app. Um, people use that all the time when they're going into an area to find new hiking trails. And there's so few of our North Country trails linked to that. And I think we're just missing out a bit. What we can do when you hike a trail, you can always suggest a new one. It just takes quite a bit of time for those to show up on the app. But that's a really good way to direct people to our trails. So I encourage you when you're out there hiking, just to, you can even use the free version of the app and keep suggesting our trails. Maybe they'll show up. Excellent. Thanks, Karen. One of the good things that we've got going for us is that hiking is generally a pretty <sighs> low barrier to entry activity. You know, the only thing you really need is, uh, you know, maybe a water bottle, uh, something to carry a sandwich in and a raincoat. Um, you know, you can hike the trail in any shoes. You don't need to, like some other activities, go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars to outfit yourself. So, um, and our trail is open to everybody. It's it's open, you know, most of the time. Uh, only a few sections of the trail that I'm aware of are, you know, closed uh, at certain times, you know, like a national wildlife refuge that doesn't allow overnight use, places like that. So, any other thoughts before we move on? All right. So apps, that was a good segue, Karen. Um, hiking apps are a great way to, to help get out on the trail and have some of this information. Um, but I would caution you, they may not be for everybody. Um, you know, if you're not super into technology, it can be maybe a steep learning curve or, you know, a little uh, daunting to, to pick up a new tool like that. And I've got kind of the battery icon you know, just like everything with technology, it's only as good as the batteries last. You know, I, I, I love paper maps because the batteries never run out on a paper map. Um, but these are just some of the popular apps that are out there. Onyx Backcountry, uh, which I think is the same, Matt, as the Onyx Hunt, just a different audience maybe. All right, he's shaking his head. So all trails, like Karen mentioned, hiking projects, one sponsored by REI. Gut Hook, um, a question for you, Matt, because uh, somebody brought this up. Uh, earlier, will we have a good hook app for the North Country Trail someday? Yeah, I'll just say that I, you know, I had a great uh, conversation with those folks uh, like two weeks ago. So, um, yeah, I think there's potential. Excellent. And, and to me, one of the benefits of an app like Gut Hook is it it does open up the like somebody mentioned, uh, you know, water conditions. You know, hikers can update that information in real time. You know, so if, if Matt goes and hikes a section and finds a spring dry, he can say, you know, as long as he's got connectivity, he can say, oh, this spring is dry on this date. And somebody might be hiking the day after him and, and would see that and go, oh, you know, I need to plan to make it to the next water source. So uh, that's one of the benefits of apps is kind of that, you know, user input and, and crowd sourcing the information. Uh, Gaia is another one, uh, Google Maps. Some trails, um, you know, like I think all of the Superior Hiking Trail shows up on Google Maps. Uh, only parts of the North Country Trail elsewhere do, like, you know, one I'm familiar with, the Cheyenne National Grasslands, it, it kind of goes out and just dead ends in the middle of nowhere. So the person hiking with the, the uh, GPS unit for Google must have just got tired and turned around. Uh, the National Park Service has, a, I think, a relatively new app that uh, has maps for all of the national parks. Uh, and I believe the North Country Trail shows up on there as well. So any other apps that folks have used that they've had good experience with for planning hikes or for recording hikes? I, 
I'd, I'd encourage folks, um, one of the biggest surprises I've had over the last couple of years is um, folks wanting to use our Avenza app to kind of create like a history of their their hikes, you know, recording their mileages and maybe taking some waypoints of like, a, you know, a cool bird they saw or something like that. Um, and I we really didn't intend Avenza maps to be to be like a, a, a history tool for your hiking. Um, so I think an app that's really good for just recording what you do, it's, it's not a navigational app um, so much, is uh, Strava. I, I think people should consider that. Um, it, it, it lets you set up an account and just like records a history of what you do and it's, it's really passive. Um, so, so that would be a recommendation I would add, it's a Strava app. Excellent, thanks Matt. Any others? Matt? Yep. Matt, did you, did you list Explorer app? I did not, no. Tell us a little okay. bit about that one. Uh, that's a free app and it's, it's called the North Country Trail Public. When you, there's a lot of maps on there that are, are, I'm not sure why they're there, but it's a free app and it's interactive. So when you're out on the trail, it shows you exactly where you're at on the trail, whether you're still on it or, you know, lost your way, but um, it's free and it's, it's, it's really uh, updates you know, all of our new stuff is updated from the Western Terminus area. So um, it was the first one I used prior to going to Avenza and found it to be very user friendly. And uh, you can point your, you know, you can pinpoint your location and drop a pin. Um, so it, it's pretty good. And then, you know, it's, it's kind of just a hokey, but I, I use my Apple Watch a lot and then just use Map My Fitness and I record my hike and It'll show me elevation changes and I can, I can change the kind of viewings of it. So uh, there's a lot of things out there, but, uh, but Explorer is free and it's, it's a pretty good app. Thanks, Glee. All right, so just some more questions for uh, you folks, um, in particularly for folks who are chapter leaders, um, you know, we've, we've just, you know, gone through the pandemic and we're, we're still kind of in it to some extent, but I think, you know, a lot of our chapters have resumed doing some group hikes. I, I was just curious, you know, because this is an opportunity for folks to share across the trail, you know, how are folks doing group hikes differently now? Does anybody want to throw out some ideas? You know, ha have we changed maximum numbers of, mm -hmm. of hikers on group hikes, things like that? Does anybody want to throw out some things from your area? Again, if you don't want to say it out loud, you can put it in the chat. Uh, are chapters doing anything in particular to get or help get new families out onto your trail section? Anybody have any ideas there? Any other thoughts on things that, uh, that you've seen that have worked to get people out onto the trail or help help them understand how to get out and enjoy the trail? Eric Rayhorst at Marquette uh, North Country Trail Hikers chapter. I think the biggest connection to get people out on the trail is to have somebody to go with you on a hike. Word of mouth, yeah, drag them along. Good point. Thanks, Eric. All right, so we are going to check out some of the tools that, that we have and, and our thanks go to Matt Robotham for, you know, making these tools a reality for us and for all of the chapters for continually sending Matt updated data so that Matt can keep our Matt products up to date. So we're going to do kind of a, a little sample of how to use a couple of our tools, the interactive map and then also our map downloads. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna plan a day hike into Bingshik Lake in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness on the North Country Trail uh, slash Kekakabic Trail, way up in the tip of the Arrowhead here in Minnesota. So uh, we're renting a cabin in Grand Marais and, and we're gonna figure out how do we get to experience so that we can tell our friends that we hiked in the Boundary Waters. So I think what I need to do is Stop sharing that and then I will share a different window. 
which doesn't appear to be there anymore. Bear with me a second. All right, Matt, I need some help. I have a, a window open on in my browser, but it's, it's not, it doesn't give me that option to share a different tab in my browser. What am I doing wrong? I guess restart isn't a very good choice right now. <laughs> right. Um, I, I mean, maybe duplicate oh, that tab right. and see if it pops up. Now it's there. there All right, can you guys see a map? That was yes? Nope. All right. So this is the trailhead. This is the Kekakabic trailhead on the Gunflint Trail. And if you click on that little P icon, you'll see there's some information. And if you click on the more info, did you guys see it took us to Google Maps? Mm -hmm. I'm not hearing anybody answering. So I don't know if you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. Do you guys see the driving directions from Grand Marais up to that trailhead? Yes. See it now. All right, so this is a pretty Matt, powerful- go, go through that again if you could, I missed it. Yep. All right. Um, so if you're on our interactive map, you click on the, the P, the parking symbol, and then you go down where it says more info, Google Maps directions, and then you just click on that link. Perfect. And Thanks. it automatically opens that, that trailhead. You can see the red pin there is centered on that trailhead. And then you have just that functionality of the Google driving directions. So we'll just put in Grand Marais, Minnesota, and that's going to tell us the route to take. And, you know, this could be very important in some of those places like you guys were talking about where, the, you know, the roads can be somewhat sketchy. Um, you know, you might even see, you know, road advisories pop up or, you know, traffic accidents, you know, kind of the, the orange detours or any of that good stuff. You know, Google seems to be pretty good at keeping up with what's going out there on our roads. So you have that functionality that's, that kind of links our maps with Google and, and its uh, vast knowledge of what's going on in the world. And you can, you can change, you know, just like anything, you can change your route. You can, you know, add in waypoints along the way. If you want to stop at a certain place, you can add all that stuff and it's going to tell you how far and how long it's going to take and all that good stuff. Hey, Matt, I just have one um, comment on a thing that I've noticed recently with Google Maps. Um, I, I guess I'm a pretty extensive user of, uh, you know, both the North Country Trail and this process that you just laid out. And yep. I don't know if, you know, why they're doing this more and more, but it seems like, especially as we get in our really remote areas, if there's like a opportunity for the trip distance to be a minute shorter, Google will route you that way. And it may be a terrible road. Yeah. Um, so I would encourage folks to not veer off like, like, you know, just don't veer off like the main roads, like the main roads are the main roads for a reason. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a computer calculation and it's, you know, we've been experiment. my wife and I have been experimenting with like, you know, what is it actually doing here when it's trying to route us this way? And it, it's literally like trying to save you five minutes or less of travel time, but it may, the stress or whatever of going down that road and wondering if you're going to be able to, you know, make it through is, is not worth the five minutes. So, um, yeah, just yeah. a little bit of common sense, I guess, in some ways, but yeah. Yep. Good to know. Thanks, Matt. So some of the other functionality in here and Matt, feel free to jump in again. You know, if you click on a segment of the line, you get some of the information that's stored in our geographic information system, which has tons of information. You know, you can see mileage for sections, but more importantly, you can see if it's open to bikes and horses and is dispersed camping allowed on that campsite. Who owns the land? You know, who do you reach out to if, you know, you have a, a more detailed question, um, you know, in this case, the Spear National Forest. And you can see that, uh, you know, it, it uh, highlighted a little section. So if you wanted to get all the way out to a certain destination, you need to make sure that you're, you know, adding up all those miles for the segments. Uh, but, you, you know, it points out some of the features along the way. And then you'll also notice it has these mile markers and half mile markers. 
And to me, that's a, one of the most powerful tools uh, for planning a hike is, you know, we always used to have to guess, well, how far is it, you know, between uh, these two mileage points, you know, if you know it's six miles from here to here, well, how far is it to this point in the middle? And you kind of had to come up with a guess. Well, now with these half mile markers, it, it really makes it a little bit easier to come up with a more accurate estimate. So if we're going to hike from the Keck Trailhead to Bingshik Lake, you know, you just do the math. Um, you know, it's about three miles because you notice this one's 483 and this one's 486. Uh, so maybe it's a, a little bit longer. Uh, so if you're, you know, coming back, you know, you can know it is double that. But if you want to take this uh, spur trail, the Centennial Trail, you can see that segment is 1.37 miles. And then you've got another uh, half a mile back. So you can, you know, come up with a pretty darn good estimate on how long a section is. Uh, so you don't need to, you know, scramble to find a guidebook to, you know, pour through to find this section. You can use our map tool. And the same thing is true with our hike download maps. They have the mile markers. Uh, and it's a lot easier to say, okay, this section right here, this is really, there's some cool feature I want to hike to. You know, I can estimate that's at mile marker 483.75 because it's halfway between 0 0.5 and 484. So it really makes it a lot more easy to come up with a, a good mileage estimate. Does that make sense? Anything else, Matt? Any other hidden tools that, that you want to point out about using our interactive map or the, the hike map downloads? Yeah, I'll just point out, you know, the, the real attraction to those half mile points for us was the fact that it allowed us to uh, link a number of different formats for, for maps. You know, as, as we started to feel this big push to go digital um, by including those half mile points on our printable maps, you know, we still had a very easy way for people to use modern tools, but with that foolproof or, or you know, mostly foolproof uh, paper map option. So, um, you know, like I said, you can load, we have those half mile points as a, as a GPS file. So you can load those onto like either a Garmin or onto the Gaia GPS app and, you know, follow along with your paper map or just use Avenza and the paper maps together. Um, or, or kind of like Glee was saying, you know, that, that data is available if you're in an area near a major road, uh, you might have cell service. Um, so you can use that through like the Explorer app or, or right through the browser on your mobile device as well. Um, so yeah, th those half mile points are kind of just meant to tie everything together. Um, yeah, I, I think that's Matt, about it. I have a question. When you were talking about that interactive map, you talked about uh, or mentioned that things would show up like um, what you could use or what you can't use. Who puts that information in there? You know, I'm, I'm talking like in the Western Terminus in the um, Audubon National Wildlife Refuge. You know, what, what you can do there. Can I camp there? Can I bike there? What can I do there? Who, who puts that information in? Is that, is that our chapter that should be sending that along? Or, or um, what? I, I, yeah, I, I mean, you can I review it. Before we put anything in there, uh, we try to look at the, I try to look at the, um, you know, the regulatory documents for that land unit. Um, so if it's, you, you know, the state park uh, there, if it's Lake Skakawea State Park, I would, I would look at, at their actual policies and regulations and, and make that determination. Um, yeah, so that, I mean, you, you can, you can kind of like review what we've put in there or send something along. Um, but yeah, it's always nice. It's always nice to just have that objective document because all of our land units do have some sort that of, they can't have regulations without those documents. So I always like to, to reference those as like a primary source. Yeah, thanks, Glee. Does anybody have any questions? That's kind of the end of the, the trail for my presentation. We just wanted to have a little bit of time and, and I think we can stay on as long as we want to if folks have specific questions yeah. about planning a hike or available resources or you know, Matt's gonna probably be, stay with us for map questions. I have a question for Matt uh, Robotham. Um, the uh, Constantine and Magpie from 11 Skies are halfway through their hike of the whole NCT this year. Uh, and they're recording it all uh, with a Garmin. Um, 
does that kind of information get back to the maps somehow if there are changes in the actual distances on the ground uh, versus what has been recorded before? How are the maps updated? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, we can use that information and I should touch base with them to, to have them send it to me. Uh, what we'll often do with Garmin information, um, we did this in the Keck uh, uh, earlier this year, we had three pretty good um, Garmin recordings of the Keck. None of them agreed with each other perfectly, um, which is to be expected. That's not, you know, we would expect that. Um, so what we did is we looked for like areas of very strong agreement where it was, you know, the the, trail lines would converge within um, you know a few feet of each other and if they diverged out past 30 feet of each other you know then then that was an area where we wanted to focus on and maybe get new information um, but but in general the trails updated you know um, either like the chapter will have kind of a, a GPS guru that that's always sending me stuff or the regional trail coordinator will um, will follow up uh, with the with the chapter um, I think we're in the position, though. I, you know, I'd like to move us more towards, um, you know, getting that data right when the even before the the new section of trail opens. So we kind of just pulled that off south of Petoskey, Michigan. Um, although we we published the maps before the trail was even open, um, but it was okay. It was just like a week early. Um, I think it was okay. I hope we didn't ruin anybody's anybody's day because there was there was a bridge that you had to access um, and that wasn't ready. So, so that's kind of my, my ideal situation is that the RTC or the volunteer is actually saying like, hey, in three weeks, we're ready to, we're ready to, you know, put the paint up on the trees and, and this section is going to be open. Can you publish the, or, you know, update the maps, you know, at that time. And, and I'd like to try to coordinate that as, as close as we can to the opening of the new section of trail. But it's, it's pretty darn accurate. I mean, I'm out on it all the time. We just went through literally we went through a ton of trail in the up and into wisconsin and i i just i rarely find something that's that's you know drastically wrong um we can always use like micro improvements i'm sure in lots of places but in general i think it's it's pretty good yeah thanks for that question does anybody else have any questions or or suggestions or things you wanted to share you, lots of you folks are experts as well so yeah, I've, Matt, I have one thing I thought of that was was a mistake I made um, because I'm I'm not super great with technology, but I was hiking and I had paper guidebooks and, and paper maps, which I really like, but I decided to take pictures of page guidebook and then use that on my phone. And uh, I was out on the trail on a multi-day hike and I went to look at information in the guidebook to find water. And I couldn't read it because my picture had gone to the cloud and it wasn't clear enough to read when I was I didn't have, you know, connection. <laughs> so that was a lesson I learned. I thought I would share. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Brad. Um, I've got a question. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Go ahead, John. <laughs> okay. Uh, down in Chief Noonday uh, section of Lower Michigan, Southwest Michigan. Uh, I'm trying to do a Jedi initiative. And what I did, so this question is for everyone. Uh, what I did, I just posted to my uh, high school graduation class um, that I'm looking for diversity. Anybody want to join a group to help me out? Because everybody's from local area. Um, and then the other thing I was thinking about doing was reaching out to the local churches cultural groups, et cetera, that are in the community. Has anybody done that? And what kind of success have you had? You can you feel know, free to put it in the chat if you want. Go ahead, Val. Yeah, John, this is Val. Um, you know, I'm, I'm staff, you know, so I can't speak from the chapter's perspective, but and I don't see anybody on here from the wampum chapter, but you know, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to them. I know they've done a lot of outreach to um, the community to uh, just invite more people to become involved. Um, and you know, I, I don't want to speak for them, but I know that one of their big takeaways is you know it doesn't happen overnight. Um, you know, 
it's not necessarily about and it's not necessarily about oh we got 10 new people involved um they've really focused more on the invita invitation and keeping the door open and creating space for people to be involved when and how they want to so um i think they've just been a great example some possibly someone you might want to reach out to as you're brainstorming ideas so you think my ideas of church and cultural groups is a good idea Sure, you should invite everyone you possibly can to come out on the North Country Trail. I have a question with with our monthly hikes. Um, how many maximum people do you think we should have on a hike? We're in the remote Western UP. She's in the National Forest too, Matt, Ottawa National Forest. Yeah, does does the forest have any group size limits? I think they did during COVID, but I don't know if that's still in effect. Yeah, I don't know. That's a really good question. I'm, I've been on group hikes with, you know, 100 people, and it's, it's definitely a different experience. Um, you know, some people don't seem to mind being in, in those long trains of people, but I know that's not for everybody. Um, you know, if your chapter has the ability to have multiple crew or uh, hike leaders participate, you know, it gives you the flexibility of, you know, splitting the group, um, you know, into smaller units. And one thing that uh, I think the Dakota Prairie chapter has done is have hike leaders that can lead different groups who want to travel at different speeds, you know, so a fast hiking group, a slower hiking group, because then that everybody has a better experience in that scenario. Yeah, I like the idea of the, of the different speeds. Um, one thing, you know, because we're so remote, our parking is very limited. So I guess um, I'm not real anxious to, you know, we used to put it out in posters and stuff around town. Well, um, then the numbers could get possibly just out of what we can handle. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, we don't want to have, you know, the trail love to death. We don't want to have all of our trailheads, you know, people parking on both sides of the road and causing safety problems and, you know, overloading the infrastructure. So that's definitely a, a consideration to take, you know, when you're planning hikes and how you promote those hikes and, and how widely, you know, you circulate them because you might have more people than the trail can handle. Sometimes what works well too uh, are to do out and back hikes. Um, rather than try to go from one place to another, with an out and back hike, you can have different groups that are moving at different speeds and going different distances, but all converging in, um, and, and maybe coming back together at the end. Um, and even if you have a, a middle spot, uh, you can hike both direction, either direction from there. Uh, like let's say you were at Black River Harbor on Lake Superior, uh, you can hike um, back towards the Porkies or uh, south towards uh, the the Copper Peak, um, and and have different groups going out and back different ways, and that can work really well. And at some place like Black River Harbor, you have a huge amount of parking. So anybody who shows up uh, can hike from there. Yeah, great point. Any other ideas that folks have? I notice we're at, uh, we're over our allotted timeline, but Abby, can we stay as long as folks want? Yeah, um, we can, absolutely, and so, um, if you want to keep talking, we can. There is, uh, we probably have another 10 minutes or so if need be, um, or we can wrap it up. So it just kind of depends on if people want to keep chatting. And I'd be remiss to, to not remind folks that, you know, if you look at the schedule for celebration, the NCTA is, is really encouraging folks to go out for a hike on the trail this weekend and to share uh, photos, tag the NCTA, you know, use the hashtag NCTA Celebration 21. Uh, I think Kate is going to be kind of compiling, you know, pictures and videos from everybody's experience and, you know, kind of mashing them together and, and having a, here's
here's what we all did together, but separate kind of thing. And Matt, can I chime in real quick too? Yep. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody's aware tonight. Uh, it's the National Park Service Awards happening at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and so just again, if you register, the Zoom link is being sent directly to your email. It would have came with this one for Matt's. If not, you can go to our website where we have all the Zoom links. I also want to make sure that you're all aware in case someone asks you um, is that all of these are being recorded. And they'll be back on that website as well within a couple business days. So um, we have a little bit of the celebration yesterday and then the rest um, like this one will be up hopefully by Monday, if not sooner. So just want to make sure you all know that everything is being recorded as well. Matt, we had a question from Rachel asking about more specific listings of volunteer opportunities and events. Um, and I don't want to like, you know, promise anything that's not there yet, but, you know, we do have some, we have a pretty cool rework of our events calendar and our events website page in the works. So I, I think everyone will be pretty happy and impressed with that when it, uh, when it comes out here. Uh, I think, I think we're shooting for the fall on that. Yeah. And I think if you just visit our website and click on the volunteer tab, uh, there'll be a way for new volunteers to learn about, um, you know, getting involved from scratch. And then for folks who are already involved, you know, some more steps, you know, like filling out the volunteer agreement forms, um, you know, training opportunities, all those kinds of things. So if you just go to our website and click on that volunteer tab, that's a great place to get started. And then there's also a volunteer resource center where if you're having problems sleeping at night, you can read uh, probably thousands of pages of uh, how to do all the stuff that we do out on the trail safely. Any other thoughts that folks want to share? Don't be bashful. Matt, this is Glee. Um, so I have no expectations or desire to hike all of the North Country Trail, but I'd like to earn my 100 mile patch in a different state every year. So I've hiked all of North Dakota and last year I did 100 in Minnesota. And I'm going over to Mackinac on Labor Day to do the hike across the bridge there. But to other chapters out there, how do you think it would be best for me to find What's the best hundred miles I could shoot for in your state? And uh, and I know I can go to maps, but and look at that. But you know, where where do you think that would be my best resource? That's my goal: is a hundred miles in every state. Do we need a top ten list for each state? That might be kind of cool. I mean, uh, I, I've reached out to some people via Facebook or whatever, and I've got some great ideas. And and I don't. Me, I don't expect those 100 miles will all be connected. I'd like to hop across the state and, and do it. But uh, I've got a couple of buddies that are interested in doing it with me. So we're just kind of trying to start planning on that. But wondering uh, what other chapter members out there might, might suggest for us. Well, I have hiked out of Michigan. And my own home section, the Spirit of the Woods, Manistee National Forest is a really nice area. Uh, the pictured rocks on Lake Superior is of course spectacular. Uh, and the Porcupine Mountains um, uh, also on Lake Superior are great. So those, and then the Eastern UP, the Superior Shore to Shore Trail uh, is very little traveled, but very nice. Does anybody still use that book that uh, came out, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago? Uh, Matt, help me out with what the name of it, but the Ron Strickland book. Yeah, yeah, that's actually kind of a, a highlight of, of good segments. Um, let me see, I'll, I'll put a couple links in the chat to it. But that, yeah, that, I don't think stuff's changed as far as, I mean, the only, yeah, I don't know. There's good, the segments that are in there are still good, um, but I think, there's a lot of other good stuff too. And yeah, like it's, it's all pretty good, really. I mean, I don't know if there's too many bad segments. You just, it's a different experience. Yeah, there you go. Harlan's got it. Yep. So I maybe we, we need a, a version two of that to capture some of the new ones that have come out since that book, you know, Audubon National Wildlife Refuge in North Dakota is not in there. You know, there's a great 12 mile hike and there's probably lots of examples like that, that you know, would be in that book if, if they were around back then. 
I we, think each one of our chapters are gonna, I think each one of our chapters are gonna say, we have the best hike. I'm not sure I'd really like to see that list because if, if our chapter, you know, if a person's chapter isn't listed on there, then that's kind of, you know, disappointing. So I'm not sure I'd really like to see that list. One thing you might want to do, Glee, is just kind of click around a little bit on the website under, you know, if you go to that volunteer tab across the top, then to local chapters and affiliates, each chapter kind of, I won't, I, I can't say every chapter, but most chapters have a few suggested hikes on their, you know, individual chapter page. So that might be, you know, kind of a place to start exploring just a few of those, um, what they consider to be sort of their sections to highlight. Yep, or some of them might have a link to download the chapter brochure, so you can look for that as well. Thanks, that's just the kind of information I was looking for. Appreciate it, and, and point well taken uh, to whoever made the comment about not wanting to see the list. You know, yeah, you don't want to put somebody else, else's chapter down and make the next one look good, but just looking for some, some good hikes that I, I don't want to miss and, and uh, look at Any other questions or comments folks want to share? I think we might be getting near the end. We've reached, we've returned back to the trailhead. So thanks everybody. Thanks for participating and thanks for all that you do to benefit the North Country National Scenic Trail. And, you know, on behalf of hikers everywhere, uh, you know, the trail wouldn't exist without you folks. So keep up the great work. Keep getting folks out there to have these remarkable experiences. Great have job, a great man. day. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah, enjoy the Thanks, rest of the celebration. Great information. Super job.